My name is Sean Atkinson and today I'm going to be showing you my music senior project. Let's start out with a background of the project. Over the last few years, 3D printers have been really growing in popularity and it seems everybody has access to one now. This trend really inspired me to look into the possibility of 3D printing trombone mouthpieces. Now, 3D printing mouthpieces is not a new concept and I'm definitely not the first one to think of it. But I've never heard of a 3D printed mouthpiece being able to match the tone quality of a metal one. I really wanted to explore that firsthand and explore the possibility of maybe replacing metal mouthpieces with 3D printed ones. Now traditionally metal mouthpieces are made one of two ways. It's either CNC milled or it's tooled on a lathe. Now a lathe will actually take a shaft or a stock of some metal and it'll actually spin it very rapidly while somebody operates on it with a tool and it'll slowly cut away material as it spins. A CNC mill, usually you clamp down a stock piece and you'll actually machine around it using a spinning drill bit. Now either of those ways you get a lot of waste material out of it because you have all this empty space which used to be material until it got machined out. Now your most commonly used type of 3D printer in today's world is called an FDM printer or a fused deposition modeling. Basically it takes an object and prints it layer by layer and it just builds it upwards. Now, for the scope of my project, I really wanted to pick a really common filament that almost everybody has access to and can be used on most printers. And when I started researching it, PLA or polylactic acid came out to be on top. It's usually very cheap and it prints at a lower temperature than your normal ABS plastic filament. And it comes in a variety of colors, same with ABS. I picked blue mostly because of BSU blue and orange. After I'd finished researching 3D printers and 3D printing methods, I had to make a 3D model of the mouthpiece. Now, this may seem simple, but it actually turned out to be a bigger pain than I thought. I started out using my digital calipers to take different measurements of dimensions of the mouthpiece. Now, I chose to model one and a half G and a 5G Bach mouthpiece, just because that's what I have on hand and those are really common trombone mouthpiece sizes, whether you're a bass or a tenor player. And in this case, I actually did a mold of the inner cup. This was mostly because I do not know how to take measurements that deep with this pair of calipers. It's just not possible to get accurate measurements. And I was really striving to be very accurate. So I actually created a mold that I then just took increments at different heights and measured and actually created a profile for it.
Once I had completed modeling the basic design in SolidWorks, it was time to export it as an STL into Matter Control, where I would then convert it into a G-code and give the printer information on how I wanted it printed. My first real official print was a 1.5G or 1.5G that I just did a really simple design, no bells or whistles or, at all. And the main focus on this was to see if the printer could actually handle something like this. And it, it does, but since I printed it with the rim down, like this, it actually caused my rounded rim to flatten out, as you can see. And that actually was some of the feedback that I got later from the studio. My second iteration on the 1.5G, I threw in a little decorative and hopefully uh, tone enhancing extrusion right here. Now this one, I did adjust the rim so it was quite a bit more curved, but as you can see, it's still printed flat. For my third iteration, I printed both a 5G and a 1.5G, and I actually went into the trombone studio class at Boise State and had the studio try out my mouthpieces, and I gave them an anonymous survey to fill out. One of the issues that I ran into with this iteration, the third iteration, was that I had to do a lot of manual adjustments with sandpaper and an X-Acto knife, and you can still see there's some fragments within the shank. And as you look down, if I can get the lighting to work, you can see a lot of spare extrusion material in there. That was really hard to get out with a piece of sandpaper, and an X-Acto knife just doesn't bend without breaking at that angle. I think part of the issue that happened there is that as I print it upside down, that's going to be hanging a little bit too far for the filament to actually print very well, and that's probably what caused it. But again, as you can see, I had to sand a lot of this down. Granted, it is a lot smoother than it was. I don't think that's beneficial unless it can print like that, but we will see. The most common issue that was reported on an anonymous survey was that the throat diameter was too small. Now while that's really great for tenor players who want to play high, it's not very beneficial for us bass trombone players who want to play low. It causes too much back pressure and doesn't allow our lips to actually fully expand and get to the frequency it needs to be. After I'd collected the data from the studio, I started making changes to the design. One major change that I did was that instead of printing with the rim down, as so, I actually started printing with the rim up. Now on this particular mouthpiece, I actually had to print out a base material like this that would increase the surface area on the bottom and would support it as it prints up. One of the issues I had when I did that originally is that I didn't have enough surface tension, or adhesion I should say, and it would actually lose adhesion with the print bed and fall over. And that actually was caused by the nozzle running into it, as you can see here. It started out great in this case, but since it lost adhesion, that seven hour print was for naught. Another big change I made after the feedback from the studio is that I increased the throat diameter. 
you can see here, it's quite a bit larger and help the bass players play lower with a better sound. The nicest thing about this type of printing is that I didn't have to do anything except cut off the very bottom of it. And I just did that with a hacksaw and a little sandpaper. I think printing with the rim up is the best way to go. So what did I learn from this project? Well, with our current technology, I do not believe 3D printed mouthpieces will replace metal mouthpieces. There's just too many issues with it. I spent an entire semester trying to get this thing to print out as beautifully as it did. And I will admit, it still does feel a little bit funny on my face just because of the layers. Now, I could have printed this with a higher or a lower uh, layer height which would have decreased the amount of ridges, or at least the size of the ridge. I could have also used a heat gun to melt the PLA just a little bit so it fills in some of the cracks. I could also use a different material. There's a lot of different filaments on the market right now. You could use NinjaFlex or TPU, which are both pretty flexible filaments. You could use nylon. There's a lot of things I could have done differently about this project, but I really just wanted to go with normal materials that everybody had access to. So again, in summary, I don't think metal mouthpieces are going to be outdated anytime soon. <laughs>